Well, last week or so I've been doing all sorts of bits, trying to get my van working as well, having problems with brakes. But this is what I'm building now. It's going to be a wardrobe. It's going to seem like a bit of a repeat of my last wardrobe because she saw the pictures, liked it, wanted that. So that's what she's getting. The only difference with this one is doors are going to go right to the ceiling or near enough going to be made pretty much exactly the same plywood carcass beach framed doors panel doors and sprayed a color that hasn't been decided yet um, this is the carcass pictures I've got this is the ceiling height 2430 and because I'm going almost to the top it's, it's sitting on a 3b2 subframe that I'll level up but because it's almost going to the top that's 50 mil up there 50 mil gap that'll only leave like a three inch cornice around the top just a flat square cornice because it's almost going to the top I've drawn a side profile and that side profile is 2376 which means that's diagonal so as I stand it up in the room these corners should miss the ceiling 2376 that's only what 60 mil 70 mil I've got about three inch clearance as I stand it up but anyway width's going to be 560 which is about 22 inch I'd like it a bit bigger but there's the bed here and you won't be able to open the doors there's going to be two hanging rails in each one this hanging rail she wants it near the top but I think that's too high so I've left them out for now I'll work that out when when we put the carcasses in they're gonna paint the inside of the carcass just hand paint it and I'm gonna spray the front and these are shelves that are gonna get a lip on so they'll look a bit fatter than that anyway it's not very good weather today so I'm gonna rip one two three four boards in half and I'll bring them inside and I'll put, I'll cut them to the exact width and square them off and start putting this together Uh, I made these to attach on there but I could never really get them to work properly I kept on banging them getting in the way just a big awkward thing but I do use them now for like I did last time when I used a little block just set this Set that like that. Set that on and just use that as my distance piece. And I'll do the same at the other end. Just gonna get my clamps.
I'm just going to check my square for accuracy. I do trust this, it's surprisingly square. I cut it on the table saw. See, it's just got a couple of grooves in there, not all the way through. And this is just a piece of 9mm ply. It's a piece of old oak, it's been in the shed for years. So it's climatized to this room. Using a straight edgy can, which is what I've cut with the track saw. Couple of pencil marks top and bottom and flip it over. See how you're doing. My pencil marks are quite good actually. Right, this is getting a little worn and this has always annoyed me a little bit. It sits on them two pads at the back, these two non-slip pads. But it always, it's always rocked a little bit. Well, a little while ago I bought this, I haven't used it. So what I'm going to do, I think, is double it up. It is getting a little bit worn this and it's not cutting as cleanly as it could do. So I'm going to give that a go. Just leave it forward a little bit, trim it off. The whole length of course. Right, so now I've got double layer on there. I've set it forward a little bit so that I can trim it. And that sits a lot better. And the off cut I should be able to do the other one that I've got that I joined. When I joined the two I've got a very slight step where I'd already cut this one and then I added that piece. So I'll be able to do the same on the other one. And the three metre one doesn't seem to have that problem. Or at least with it cutting the long the grain most of the time it gives a clean cut. Hopefully this should tidy that up a bit. Right, that edge is a lot better. Right, there are the six uprights, side pieces. I'm just going to cut the bases and the tops. I can get the short one out of here, that comes to roughly there, I've just roughly marked it. And then the long one comes to about there, so I've got a couple of inches to play with. I've cut them, I've put them together so that they're flush all the way down, a few clamps on, just to see if I can get them, just to stop them moving. And I'm going to cut them square. I've put a square line down so that I can see if my track saw is cutting square. If not, I can adjust it slightly. And like I say, I've got a couple of inches to play with. If I'm cutting them together, because if I do make a very slight mistake, at least the <laughs> mistakes, you know, the same top and bottom. It's only going to be like a millimetre or two or a completely different measurement. But I've put them face to face, so this is the back side, so it doesn't really matter about that. And I've got some long timbers going underneath. see my saw it's cutting pretty square I don't adjust it I don't tilt it and things like that so set it up square and it stays that way so now I'll make a single cut across there at the length I want and I can make another cut over there right so I've got my square end one cut there 
It's neat on this side, but it broke out a little bit because I had the track on this side, but it don't matter because that's the back. Like I said, I had a couple of timbers underneath. And then on this end, a couple of waste pieces. And it's flush all the way along the front. Right, this is one of the side pieces, one of the uprights. It's the back side of this, so I'm going to mark side, big letters. And I'm going to put biscuits in the end, just three. So I can get one, two, three. I can get some screws in between. I cut myself a, a jig, a template. Square piece of timber on one end. I've cut it to exactly the right length because then I can tell if it's slightly off. Don't really matter with these biscuits, you, can, you don't have to be exact, but like that there. And I know from an experience, the first one needs to be 70 mil in. And 70 mil there, and I'm going to put one in the middle. 560 which is 280 I'll be right there square these over so I can use it on both ends And although the, they should be equal, if I put a pencil mark there, pencil mark there, yeah. And although they're equal, I always try and work off a front face. So what I'll do is on the other side, put a V. That point towards the front edge. And I'll always work off the front edge. So, from that, put my pencil marks. Alright, the joint is set to go to the middle of a board. This is the outside, so I want my fence sitting on there. could plug, plug the extractor into it and that's better when you're doing the up and down but it gets in the way quite a lot Alright, and when I cut these I cut them with the face underneath because you get a cleaner cut where the blade's cutting up like that so you see it's broken out a bit here. This was before I, I stuck that extra bit on my track. But the bottom's gonna be sitting on there like that. So I should get a nice neat I should get a nice neat bit as it sits down onto the onto the base. So now I've cut side, side, and two other sides. So that's that side, that side that side and that side what I need to do now is this division and the bases right these are the bases they haven't altered since I cut them I haven't moved them remember I cut them together so what I'm gonna do is lift one up let me just find something to put under that just put my tape measure under I'm gonna lift it up and these are the faces when I cut them I cut them face to face so what I'll do is that I'll do the same on that one front edge so I'll use my template guider thing again I'm going to be plunging so I just need to set these back a little bit I imagine this was one of the sides that I just cut, one of the long sides, and I cut from the back side, 
and now I want to be cutting from this edge here so these two meeting faces are Right, these are the two bases for the bigger wardrobe. Done exactly the same as I did on the little one. The two faces are together. What I need to do is measure the distance to the centre line of the two boards that are going to make the division. Now my drawing is 467 between the uprights. So I've got 467. These are the two uprights. So 467 between plus the timbers is about 505. I'll measure it properly. So that measurement was 503. So what I've done there is measure that. That should be the center of those two boards. I won't square this across. I'll measure from there to there. Because when I cut these, if that was a millimeter out of square, then this is a millimeter out of square. I've got shelves to go in here, you know, in the end, end unit there, and I'll be ripping them down parallel. So if everything's just that few mil out of square here and there, I'll get gaps down the side. It's nice if you, when you come to put the shelves in, you've got a nice parallel board and it just, just slides in nicely. So just checking, see there I've got 9.35 to the edge of this inner board. There's my mark at 503, there's going to be another board here. So, 9.35 I need to the inside of this timber here. So, looks like I'm about right there. So there'll be an 18 mil piece on there. Measure a thousand times and cut once. Measure twice, cut once. Yeah, I'll just move that board a little bit. And I ain't got 18 mil there, but yeah, that's right. So now I can cut these uprights, and this is it's all very similar joints to the shoebox and any other wardrobe I've made. The ends. I'm going to represent using this and I'll sit that on there there's my two marks I'll sit that on there cut down and I'll spin it around and I'll cut down and then when I come to do the the dividers I'll sit them so that so that they are face up so that when they come together they'll do that the same with the other one so face up for the air dividers and this one I just need a straight edge to work down there same on that one right I'm going to use me template as my straight edge. So working off the front edge again, sit that there, a couple of clamps.
could just put one row in and and stick your board to it, your second board to it. So now I've built that, put them on the shelf, and I'll do the uprights. These are the two dividers. Front edge again, got my pencil marks. And I'm using the one of them as just the just a base, just like a table. I'll clamp that to that, and then I can run in there, and like I say, face up. So doesn't matter if it's not square or anything. We're only going into the end. What's important though is that there's no gap underneath here. If that pushes down, that will be off. So I'll slide this over, do the other end. Flip them over and do the other one. 